Hi everybody, this is Tim from Pitsco Education and today we're going to walk through a step-by-step -step build of the wheelie bot from the Tetrix Prime RC starter set. Now everything you need is in this set and I pulled out some of the components to make this particular build easier but there is some actual setup that you'll need to do with the set. Number one, if you're brand new and got a brand new set, you'll need to sort it. You'll actually have to have your teacher do some setup like assembling the servos but once they do that, you will be ready to go. So let's start by identifying what we have laid out here in front of me for the build of the wheelie bot. I'm gonna start with the 15 hole beam, um, the eight hole beam that I have, the four hole beam, I have two of those. I have two of the inside 90 degree connectors. I have one uh, beam hub attachment, two set collars, actually eight of the bronze bushings, four of the 40 millimeter steel axles. I have four of the quick rivets with the connecting locking peg. I have three of the 90 millimeter wheels. I have my hex tool. I have my six volt battery. I have a standard servo. I have one RC, or actually continuous rotation servo. I have my on off switch, my battery clips, my battery retention devices or bungee cords, eight of the thumb screws, four of the wing nuts, and last but not least, I have my RC receiver that will go on the bot once we get it finished. So if we're ready, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing that we want to do is locate our 15 hole beam. Now I want to make start by making sure that everybody understands how to identify the lengths of the beams. You're basically going to count the small holes, not the large ones, but the small holes. So for this long beam, we would count the small holes and we should come up with 15. So I'm going to take the 15 hole beam. I'm going to take two of the bronze bushings. I'm going to start by putting those in the last hole that we have right there. Then I'm going to set that down just for a moment and I'm going to locate, locate my continuous rotation servo. Now, if it doesn't have a label on it, then um, basically you can identify that by the ability to actually turn that all the way around. Um, that would indicate that it is a continuous rotation servo. So I'm going to start with the servo by actually taking one of my 40 millimeter axles. I'm going to seat that firmly in the uh, servo. If I back out my set screw first here. Now the uh, servo horn where this actually the uh, axle goes into is D shaped. So that keeps the axle from actually rotating. So the set screw is there strictly for keeping that servo from coming out. And I say that because this is a plastic housing and a metal screw. You don't want to get overzealous when you tighten that, that screw because you could strip that out and damage it. So that's there just to keep that from coming out, not to keep it from turning. So once I have my axle in my servo, I'm going to take my beam and again making sure that my bushings don't come out and I'm going to actually set that into my beam just like that. You'll feel, feel it kind of click in. I'm going to take one of my thumb screws and I'm going to uh, snug that down. Again, you have a metal screw going into a plastic housing, so you don't have to get really tight with that. Uh, you can use the hex driver if you have long fingernails and you don't want to um, you can't feel like you can get that snug, but just take the hex driver and again, lightly snug that. Once we have that attached, I'm going to go ahead and take one of my 90 millimeter wheels. And again, we have the same situation. It is a D shape. Uh, it will slide on the axle just like that. So the, the D shape keeps it from rotating and the set screw uh, is there simply to keep it from coming off. Now, if either the servo or the the wheel does not have the set screw actually already in place, you will have to put the set screw before you can move on to and actually tighten those down. So now that we have that piece down, we can actually set it aside and get ready to move on to the next step. For this next step, we're ready to build the front assembly. So we're going to start by taking the eight hole beam 
and I'm going to start by putting one of the 90 degree inside connectors on one side, the other 90 degree inside connector on the other side, and then I'm going to take with my quick rivets, actually put one on one side, put the locking peg to hold that in place, place another quick rivet on this end, again using the locking peg to hold that in place, turn that over, and again applying the two quick rivets and the locking pegs and once I have that together I should have an assembly that looks like this so from there I'm gonna go ahead and put my four hole beams one on either side and I should have a piece that is uh, resembling this and I can set that down just for a moment because we need to apply the wheels so I'm gonna start with one of the 40 millimeter axles I'm going to place a set collar on one end of that. I'm going to snug that down. Now, it's a little bit easier when you start with the set collar on the axle in order to make sure that the depth is correct through the actual four hole beam and into the wheel. So I'm going to apply a bronze bushing to that. And then I'm going to take my frame and it doesn't matter which end we start with, but I'm going to actually go ahead and put my uh, axle and bushing through one side. I'm going to go ahead and put my other bronze bushing on the opposite side and then I can take my 90 millimeter wheel apply that and actually then snug both of those uh, set screws down again we don't want to get over tight with those we just want to go ahead and we can make sure that that rotates and then I can do the other side set it down start with my again my set collar apply that to my axle Just like such, put a bushing on the axle, put that through my other upright, bottom hole, apply the bushing to the other side, put my last wheel on that side, tighten my set screw, and now I'm ready to actually attach my beam attachment hub, and that is this piece uh, right here. That's going to go right in the middle, just like that. I'm going to turn that over, take two of my thumb screws, and actually just tighten that down like that. One last thumb screw. And I have my front assembly done. So that I can set that down and we're ready to go on to the next step. For this next step, we actually want to add the two pieces together, which is going to create the steering mechanism. So we're going to start with the standard servo. Now again, we can identify if it doesn't have the label on it, we can identify the standard servo by actually how far it rotates. The standard servo should have a limited amount of range and it will only rotate about 180 degrees. So I'm going to start with that. And I'm actually going to actually insert my 40 millimeter axle. Seat that firmly. Go ahead and tighten my set screw down. Apply one of my bushings to uh, the axle. And then I'm actually going to put that through the first hole in my 15 hole beam. So it's going to uh, be in this orientation, just like that. Before I put my thumb screw in, I'm going to go ahead and put my second bushing in. And then I'm going to take my thumb screw and snug that down. Now, the reason I put the bushing in before is sometimes if I tighten that thumb screw down before I put the bushing in, it's a little snug to put that bushing through. So now that once I have that piece together like that, I can actually combine the two by actually putting that through just like that. So my Axle is going through from my standard servo to my beam attachment hub. I can snug both of those set screws down. And then I have that part of my wheelie about finished. So we're actually ready now to go on to the final step, which is applying the battery and the electronics. Okay, for this final step, we need to actually apply and mount the battery and the wireless receiver. So to mount the battery, we're going to start by mounting the battery clips. 
And I'm gonna put this uh, first battery clip on about this particular hole. And if you wanted to count from the end, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six of the small holes and it would go in the actual seventh. I'm gonna take the wing nut. Now, this is gonna be very important because the wing nut has to be in place before you can put the thumb screw in because that actually locks in place. Once it's in place, you can't turn that. So I put the wing nut in and then I'm gonna uh, tighten down my thumb screw. Now this is one of those places where sometimes you have a little bit of, because of that battery clip, you have a little bit of um, limited access to the thumb screw. So if you have trouble snugging that down by hand, again, you have your hex tool that you can uh, use to snug that down. So with one battery clip in place, I need to place and mount the other one. So again, you can leave one or two holes between uh, the two clips. So I put my uh, clip in place. Uh, I actually put my locking wing nut in place, just like that. Make sure that that snaps in place. Then I'm gonna take my thumb screw and finish attaching that by snugging that down into the wing nut. And again, I can finish that up with my hex driver. Now, once I have my battery clips in place, before I go ahead and mount my battery because of access, I'm gonna go ahead and mount my receiver. Now, we have a similar situation. I'm gonna mount it on the side. I'm gonna use my wing nuts, place those on the side of my beam and place just like that. And once they're in place, I can use my thumb screw just like that. And again, when you see that when we actually start getting components close together, we, we begin to have limited access. So snug that one in place. Use my second wing nut on the front place. And then I can use my last thumb screw. Tighten that down. Now, this is one of those situations where if I need to, I can rotate that out of the way and use my hex driver to snug that in place. So I have my battery clips mounted, my receiver is mounted. I can take my battery, put that in place just like that. Use my battery retention devices, my bungee cords. I can put them in a crisscross fashion and that mounts my battery firmly in place. So uh, with that in place, I'm ready to go ahead and finish up by, with my wiring. I'm gonna start by taking my on off switch and I'm going to, this is gonna be, uh, if we add this, this will allow us to actually turn our robot on and off with an actual switch instead of uh, unplugging the battery. So I'm gonna start with my battery and I wanna make sure that my red and black wires are lined up on the same side. That just simply plugs in like that. And then I'm gonna take the other end. So I'm gonna rotate that like uh, my wheel out of the way so we can see our connection points. And I'm gonna rotate this so we can see it clearly. But the final end of the on off switch needs to go into our receiver. There's a port labeled battery at the top. The black wire must go to the outside. <laughs> and if I can plug that like that. We can test to make sure that we have power by turning on our switch and we should see a red flashing light. Rotate that so everybody can see and that indicates that we have power. I'm going to turn that off just for a minute and finish up my other connections. I have a steering servo. Undo my wire here for a minute and I'm going to put that into port number um, that are marked channels, channels one through four. I'm gonna apply that into channel, let's put that in channel one, just like that. Again, the black wire to the inside. And then my drive servo, this is my continuous rotation servo. I'm gonna take that around and I'm gonna put that into port number three. <laughs> And again, uh, I chose the channels because of the way they align with the gamepad 
and receiver. So I have my drive in three and my steering in one. So once I have those, I'm gonna actually clean my wiring up a little bit by taking advantage of my battery retention clip or bungee cord. And I'm gonna put those just like that so that I kind of clean up my wiring, keep that from getting in the way of things. And that kind of keeps it like that and I am ready to go. I can get my game pad and we see I have my gray game pad receiver. Um, I can actually power that on. I can power on my receiver again. Uh, and I'm gonna turn my game pad off so we can see that pair. Uh, with the game pad turned off, I actually have a blinking red light, if everyone can see that. When I make my pairing with my power on my game pad, that light will actually turn a solid red. That indicates that I have a, a good pairing between the two devices. So just in case your actual receiver does not pair correctly with your gamepad, let me go ahead and show you how to fix that as a way of troubleshooting real quick. So I've turned my power on and I'm getting the flashing light, but when I power on my gamepad, it does not connect. So I can actually put my receiver into pairing mode uh, with this little button in the back, and I'm gonna press that. And when I do that, it actually begins to flash rapidly. If you can see that, I'm gonna try and hold that so everyone can see it. And when I uh, actually have the rapid flashing, I can power on my game pad, there is a connect button. And when I hold down my connect button when I'm close to the receiver, it will make that sound and actually turn to a solid light, and I know I have my pairing. So that's all it takes to go ahead and actually do my pairing. So now I want to set that down because I've paired my receiver. I see that my um, actual uh, steering is not quite correct and I can correct that with trim. There are four trim uh, dials on each, then each one is associated with the channel. I have my steering in motion on this, uh, this particular joystick. So I can actually move my trim knob and straighten that out so that it actually is more in the middle and my steering is more in the right direction. And then if I turn my joystick left or right, I act, my ro robot will actually steer left and right. And as I put my joystick forward or back, uh, my robot will actually travel forward or back. Now, if for any reason those are in the opposite direction. I have what we call dip switches that are right here that I can re reverse the direction that my servo will run uh, re and regardless of which channel that I use. So you use those dip, six, or dip, dip switches if you need to. So once I have my robot ready and uh, built, uh, you can go to tetrixrobotics.com or pitsco.com for activities or additional real-world connections.